Think back to the very first 30 minutes on RuneScape you ever played. I'm pretty sure I killed goblins and made about 40 GP and thought I was rich. But what's the best possible first 30 minutes someone could have on free to play? In terms of making GP, and that's what this challenge is all about. How much GP can someone make in free to play on RuneScape in 30 minutes, starting from a fresh account? The winner gets times 1000 what they made. If you make 100k, you get 100 mil. But that's a lot less GP than I usually award, so I decided to give every single person who submitted a clip who didn't win times 100 what they made too. The best part about the challenge is anyone can enter. I post the rules on the community tab of my YouTube channel. The rules for this challenge were simple. You can start anywhere on the free to play RuneScape map. You can start with 10k GP in your inventory so that you don't have to do the stronghold of security. Other than that, you weren't allowed to progress in basically any way before the challenge starts. And you can't get help from any other players. It's a solo challenge. Now, I'm not rich on RuneScape, so I bought a lot of RuneScape bonds to award this much GP. And that wouldn't have been possible possible without the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. ExpressVPN allows you to connect to servers in countries you're not currently in. That's helpful for a variety of reasons. When you connect to other countries, sometimes airline tickets are actually cheaper from those locations. You can actually save a lot of money by simply connecting to one of ExpressVPN servers. Lots of platforms like Netflix also only offer certain shows in certain regions. If I want to watch Rick and Morty, all I have to do is connect to the UK server and there it is. The best part is you can connect in literally seconds. ExpressVPN has a lot of other uses as well, like protecting RuneScapers from repeated DDoS attacks in high-risk situations. So go to www.expressvpn.com slash sirpugger to find out how you can get three months for free. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. I got 46 submissions for this challenge. Obviously, I can't show them all, but let's get right into it. 30 min million starts off their run in Remington. They're gonna start buying thread from the shop there. It looks like they're buying 50 thread at a time and hopping worlds. The price of thread is only one GP in the shop, but on the Grand Exchange, the average is nine GP, which is a pretty great margin. Ray's Works is starting off his run deep in the wilderness at the Ice Plateau. I'm sure most of you know there's a spawn there of three cosmic runes. Cosmic runes are 150 GP each, so every world Ray's Works hops to is 450 GP. They're also stackable so he can spend the whole time just sitting here hopping worlds and collecting runes. Unless there's a PKer around. If he can get out of the wilderness with his stack of cosmic runes safely, he's gonna make a lot of gold. Oasis starts off the run by buying runes from Aubrey in Verrock and then training on a mugger and suiciding to go to Lumbridge. He's then gonna start off the X marks the spot quest and buy a spade from the general store there. Spoiler alert, but Oasis completes four beginner clue scrolls in 30 minutes on a fresh account, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Beginner clue scrolls have some pretty valuable uniques, including most Slippers which trade for between four to 500k. Going into this challenge, a lot of really skilled players thought the winner of the challenge would be the one who gets mole slippers. However, there's actually a hidden game mechanic in play that nobody knew about before this challenge that makes that impossible. Oasis is gonna finish X marks the spot in three minutes, which gives him an XP lamp for 300 XP, which he uses on magic, as well as a beginner clue scroll. He finishes that beginner clue scroll in nine minutes and gets no uniques. He heads over to the Lumbridge Goblins, which drop beginner clue scrolls and proceeds to mage them them for another clue scroll. With 16 minutes left, he gets another one, and with 14 minutes left, he completes it and only gets two steel full helms. Again, no uniques. I'm just gonna call this guy literally this guy because, well, look at the username. This guy starts off his run at the Grand Exchange using that starting cash to buy a lot of cheap stuff. This is actually one of the best free-to-play moneymakers in general, although it's a little risky. He's gonna teleport to the Ferox Enclave and then run north into the Bandit Camp. There's actually a Bandit duty-free store here in level 23 Wilderness that will buy a lot of items for a lot more than they're worth on the Grand Exchange. Obviously, though, you're in the wilderness and at level 3, a level 27 could easily one-hit you here. It looks like it's paying off, though, because with 20 minutes left, he's already sold all of the items to the shop and amassed 38k. So he's going to buy some more items from the Grand Exchange to repeat that process, as well as some energy potions and food to speed it up. We're going to call this contestant Arrow Guy because I actually never was able to see his username. And there's a lot going on in this clip, and I was pretty stunned when I first saw it. Arrow Guy starts his run still on Tutorial Island and is talking to the combat instructor. He's at the stage where the combat instructor gives you a bow and 50 bronze arrows to kill rats. Except as soon as Arrow Guy talks to the combat instructor, he immediately drops the bronze arrows, talks to the combat instructor again to pick up 50 more.
more. He's also using hotkeys, which is questionable and a debated thing in the RuneScape community as to whether that's cheating. More on that later. In the end, he'll be able to pick up all of the bronze arrows, and they're worth 4 GP each. So since he's getting 50 at a time, he's getting 200 GP each in basically less than a second. I really didn't expect something like this, but the real question is, can he get that off of Tutorial Island? Even though I didn't specifically say that he could start and end on Tutorial Island, the point of the challenge is to make GP. If he can't take the items off of Tutorial Island, they're worthless. Lily Dance starts off by buying some trout from the Grand Exchange and then teleporting over to the Ferox Enclave via the Clan Wars Teleport. They're going to run north to the graveyard where there are some plank spawns. The GE price of those is 308 GP, and it looks like there are at least three of them in that graveyard, which means she's going to be profiting quite a bit per world. She clears out one world of planks and then hops to the next, and then I'm guessing we'll bank at Ferox Enclave. I have seen a lot of bots do this before, so I'm wondering how much GP they're going to make. Free GP Pugger is going to start off by starting the Sheep Shearer quest. That involves shearing a bunch of sheep and turning the wool into balls of wool, and then he's going to go turn the quest in to finish Sheep Shearer and get three crafting. He then uses the Security Stronghold Tutor to teleport over to the Barbarian Village, which is a pretty fast and smart way of getting there. He heads over to the Grand Exchange to buy leather, which he crafts to get up to five crafting. Then he's going to buy gold bars and head over to Edgeville to start crafting gold rings at the furnace. Verf Shop, aka Verf the YouTuber, is going to start off his run in Alcarid at Domic's Crafting Store. He's going to start by buying a combination of jewelry molds, threads, and needles. You can just tell by his mouse movements when he's waiting to hop worlds that he's absolutely wired. Obviously because jewelry molds are aren't stackable, he's gonna have to run back and forth from the bank. Roven Eat is gonna start off his run at the Earth Staff spawn in the deep, deep wilderness, level 43 Wildy right here. In less than four minutes, he gets a full inventory of Earth Staffs and suicides to a nearby hill giant. He collects the Earth Staffs and Lumberage from death and then uses the Security Stronghold Tutor to teleport to Barbarian Village. At the GE, he's able to sell those staffs for almost 1k each, which gets him a lot larger of a cash stack starting out. He then buys a lot of Alcables and teleports over to the Ferox Enclave to get to the Bandit Camp to sell those Alcables to the Duty Free Shop. With a little bit over 18 minutes left, he's done selling those items and has 91k. He's gonna use that 91k to start buying team capes from Larry in the wilderness and banking those at the Ferox Enclave. Sir Pugwento is starting off his run near the Ferox Enclave where there are lots of bone spawns and this run is pretty simple. Pick up the bones and bank them in the Ferox Enclave. I'm not quite sure how much bones go for, but between 50 and 100 GP, I'm assuming, so he's gonna make 1 to 3k per inventory. Sometimes it's the simplest strategies that work. This might just be my favorite run of all time. Sir Chugger is gonna start off his run here by buying a lot of Asgarnian ale with his 10k. He immediately banks it and just starts drinking the Asgarnian ale. You can buy the ale for 60 GP on the Grand Exchange, and those beer glasses are worth 71 GP. Plus, he's getting some free ale out of this. Pick up Chaos starts off his run by buying 14 anchovy pizzas and then he's gonna head north all the way up to the fortress in the wilderness. His username gives away his strategy. There's actually a chaos rune spawn in this fortress. Two chaos runes spawn there. Since he ran here in the beginning of the challenge, he hasn't lost aggro to the surrounding NPCs. He ends up dying to one of them and has to come all the way back. The beer dude one starts off his run in the Varrock clothing shop and he's gonna start buying brown aprons, blue skirts, and red capes. I don't know the exact grand exchange prices of these items, but they only cost a couple GP in the shop. Toleration 1 starts off in the sword shop in Varrock, and it looks like all he's doing is buying bronze swords. Just to make sure that's his plan, I fast forwarded, and yeah, all he's doing is buying bronze swords and banking them. Aerith starts off his run at Port Serum in the fishing shop. He's gonna be buying all sorts of fishing equipment and banking at the bank deposit box on the docks. He's buying lobster pots, fishing nets, harpoons, and fishing rods. Junox starts off his run in Draenor Village. He's gonna go up the stairs of a nearby house and search the bookcase, which actually gives a tinderbox. If you already have a tinderbox, the bookshelf won't give you another one, so he has to drop all of them as he continues to collect them. Definitely a free-to-play moneymaker I didn't know existed. With three minutes left, Lily Dance is gonna finish up their last inventory of collecting planks and then head back to the Grand Exchange. In less than 30 minutes, they've collected about 200 planks, but they end up selling for a lot less than that 308 average GE price. In total, they got 52k from the planks. When Lily Dance is done selling everything in their bank, they end up with 61.5k, so roughly 120k per hour. The arrow guy finishes collecting those bronze arrows from the combat instructor. He picks up the stack, which is an insane 148,000 bronze arrows in 30 minutes. He's gonna go on to the bank instructor, take out all of his items, and price check it for a final price check of 596k. What a creative idea, although I have to say, I tested it for myself, and you can't take those items off of Tutorial Island. They disappear when you go to the mainland. So arrow guy didn't actually make anything, which was the point of the challenge. 200 IQ and 
10 out of 10 for creativity though. With four minutes left, 30 min million stops buying threads because they're all out of stock. He heads over to the Port Serum Magic Shop instead and starts buying blue and black wizard hats. He ends up with 6,700 threads and a full inventory of wizard hats and price checks it for 68k. That's pretty good money making for your first 30 minutes on RuneScape. Free GP Pugger has made a lot of progress with those gold rings and heads back to the Grand Exchange to sell them all, gaining 10k cash. He now has the crafting level for gold necklaces, which is a better profit, so he's gonna buy a lot more gold bars and head back to the Edgeville Furnaces to craft those gold necklaces. With 25 seconds left, Free GP Pugger gets 21 crafting and then finishes up their inventory of gold necklaces. They head to the bank, withdraw everything, and price check for 18.5k. 30 minutes of crafting gold necklaces would be a lot more GP than this, but more than half of their 30 minutes was spent getting a high enough crafting level. We're back with Verf and he must have timed this pretty perfectly because he started with 10k, never went to the Grand Exchange, and with one minute left he has 80 GP to use on the shop. Originally he was buying threads, needles, and jewelry molds, but it looks like he's also switched over to chisels. He finishes up his last inventory and goes for the price check and in 30 minutes without even going to the Grand Exchange and starting with 10k, he was able to make 140,000 GP. That's almost 300k GP per hour in free to play starting with basically nothing. I hope all you noobs out there are writing this down. Right as the timer hits zero, Ray's works collects his last cosmic runes and goes to the Ferox Enclave to price check. He was able to collect 804 cosmic runes in 30 minutes. His final price check came out to be 140k GP. GP. That's a very solid amount of gold for 30 minutes in free to play. With just one minute left, this guy is coming back to the bandit camp for a final run to sell some more items to the duty free shop. The timer runs out for this guy with a lot of stuff still waiting to be sold in his inventory. That's unfortunate, he could have made a lot of extra gold if he had sold those items to the shop in time. He crosses the wilderness ditch and does a quick price check 113k, which is really good. Sir Puguento's run is basically over, and it looks like in 30 minutes he's collected 326 bones and they're selling for 92 GP each. After he's done selling everything, he ends with 41.5k GP. We're back with Sir Chugger and some great chugging content. The timer runs out and Sir Chugger chugs his last beer. In the price check, we can see he has 16.4k, a 6.4k profit from drinking all of that ale. The timer runs out on Pickup Chaos and he's going to price check all those Chaos runes, 580 of them, for a total of 37.8k. I think the winning strategy here in terms of picking up runes is going to all the way to the Ice Plateau to pick up those Cosmic runes instead. With just a little bit over 11 minutes left, Oasis gets another beginner clue scroll and with seven minutes left he completes it but doesn't get any uniques, just some bronze and iron arrows. With five minutes left, Oasis gets another beginner clue scroll from a goblin and he's gonna complete that with one minute left. Once again, Oasis gets no uniques. The clue scroll is worth 1,319 GP. Even though Oasis did four beginner clue scrolls, he only made less than 5k GP. Mata Ash actually confirmed on Twitter that there are restrictions in place to prevent newly created accounts from getting uniques from beginner clue scrolls so that a massive bot farm couldn't farm the uniques. The beer dude one's run is coming to an end and he has 76 aprons, 143 blue skirts, and 267 red capes. He ends up selling most of it in the grand exchange almost instantly and goes for the price check 105k. That's a great run right there. We're back with toleration one with less than a minute left and he's done buying those swords. He's bought 374 bronze swords in the 30 minutes and I wonder how much they're gonna sell for. Historically on the grand exchange they definitely don't sell for more than 60 GP each. And somehow Toleration 1 gets 4 million GP from those 374 bronze swords. In the rules of this challenge, obviously I put in no GE manipulation, so Toleration 1 is definitely disqualified. Aerith finishes up the last minute of his run buying the fishing equipment and heads to Lumbridge to bank. He's gathered a decent amount, over 100 of most of the fishing equipment, and goes for the price check, which ends up being 85k total. Junox is finishing up his challenge. He got 620 tinderboxes in 30 minutes. You can see in the chat his wrist definitely hurts after that. He sells all the tinderboxes and ends with 53k GP. Right as the timer finishes, Roven Eat has a full inventory of team capes and is heading back to the Ferox Enclave. He spent about 60k in the last 18 minutes on those team capes and he heads back to the Ferox Enclave, price checking everything for 259k GP. In Roven Eat's first 30 minutes on the game, he could buy a full rune set and a rune scimitar. 
card. Almost best in slot gear and free to play. If that's not efficiency, I don't know what is. Roven Eat wins the challenge with 259k in 30 minutes from a fresh free to play account. That means he wins 259 mil GP. He had an incredibly unique strategy with those earth stabs, buying items and selling them to the duty free shop and then buying team capes. Even though Arrow Guy technically made zero GP, I still awarded him 100 mil because I loved the run so much. I've awarded over 40 out of the 46 participants 100 times what they made as well. So if you're watching this and you submitted a clip, don't worry, we'll still find a time to meet. I was super happy to see that a lot of these people were actually free to play only, so hopefully they got membership from the gold. Here are the high scores for this video. Sorry if I missed anyone. Also a huge shout out to the people that donated GP for this challenge. Thanks to Silverpunk, Crix, O3K, Honkai, Zoxo, Lunastrophic, Mr. Awesome on YouTube, and Booty Savage one If you donate 10 mil GP or more, I'll put your name up here for the next challenge video. Submissions for the next challenge are due in one week, and I'm really excited about this one. How high of a total level can you get in one hour on Deadman Mode World 45? XP rates are 15 to 20 times the regular game, and you start out with some quests completed. The winner gets 1 billion GP. Now the timer starts when you select a location to teleport to from Skippy on Tutorial Island. Even though it's Deadman Mode, new accounts have a 12 hour protection, so don't worry about anyone attacking you. You'll also be able to track your time using that 12 hour protection timer in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. No help from any other players, no use of alts, no picking up items other players drop. Don't use the grand exchange and make sure your XP tracker is visible in game. Also make sure to check back in case I have to tweak the rules at all within 24 hours of posting this. Good luck everyone. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video. And if you like more than one of my videos, consider subscribing.